Welcome to our Aero channel. Please enjoy this detailed educational and informative video documentary about the United States Census of 2020. It was the 24th census in U.S. history and the first time that all households had the option to complete it online. Studying census data and demographic information is essential for understanding population trends, societal needs, and resource allocation. It offers valuable insights into communities, helping to guide public policy, education, healthcare, and economic development. The U.S. Census Bureau plays a critical role by collecting, analyzing, and making this data accessible for the benefit of the public. We have used the data for informative and educational purposes. We acknowledge and appreciate the Bureau's commitment to providing this information as a resource for education and understanding. We also extend our gratitude to those who have contributed to the data collection, helping to shape a clearer picture of our society. The learning objectives are on your screen. We review the key findings from the 2020 U.S. Census, define diversity index, evaluate the prevalence map by county, race, and ethnicity. We also review the data by racial or ethnic categories. Review the foreign-born data, including states with the most foreign-born population, foreign-born by region of birth and period of entry. We also review naturalization, rates by region, educational attainment, labor force participation, and fight census rumors. The key findings of the 2020 U.S. Census are that demographic patterns are changing in the country. The U.S. is more multiracial and more ethnically diverse than measured at the last census in 2010. Finally, the chances that two people chosen at random are of different race or ethnicity groups has increased since 2010. On your screen are quick facts about the U.S. The population was around 331 million at the time of the census with a median household income of $75,149. About 94% of households had a computer. Foreign-born persons made up 13.7% of the population. There were approximately 8.3 million employer establishments. Of these, approximately 1 million were minority-owned and 1.1 million women-owned firms as of 2017 data. On this slide is the U.S. Census 2020 prevalence data grouped by race or ethnicity. It is color-coded to identify race or ethnicity. In the columns are the largest racial or ethnic group, the second and third largest racial or ethnic group. The percentage of the various ethnic and racial groups are disclosed by state. This is an important graphic because it provides information that is readily available and answers most of the questions that people have about the census, namely the percentage of the racial or ethnic groups compared to each other and compared to the whole. More information can be obtained online at census.gov. As the U.S. population continues to grow and change, the migration patterns and demographic characteristics of ethnic or racial categories also change, including the foreign-born population. Demographically, the world is also changing as people move for a variety of reasons, so these changes are not restricted to the U.S. Between 2010 and 2022, some of the most notable shifts were for place of birth, naturalization rates, and educational attainment. The foreign-born population had more people coming from Asia and Africa, higher naturalization rates, and higher levels of educational attainment among nearly all regions of birth. To be able to measure the increasing diversity we see in our population, it is important to have indices that researchers can agree on. This makes it easy for all researchers to have the same measuring yardstick for comparison. An index that the U.S. Census Bureau utilizes is called the Diversity Index. On your screen, the Diversity Index is defined and the indices are explained. 
The diversity index measures the likelihood that two randomly chosen people belong to different racial or ethnic groups. It ranges from zero to one. Zero means everyone shares the same characteristics, while one means everyone is different. For ease of interpretation and clarity, the diversity index in the table you will see shortly is expressed as a percentage. On your screen is the list of 10 counties with the highest diversity index in 2020 compared to 2010. The list is ordered from top to bottom based on the county with the highest diversity index in the 2020 data. What the data demonstrates are that the state of Hawaii has the most diverse counties, with three counties represented on this list. They are Hawaii County, Maui County, and Kauai County. California and New York states are tied, and in second place are states that have the most diverse counties on this list, with two counties each. The counties in California are Solano County and Alameda County. In New York State, the counties are Queens County and Kings County. This map shows the most prevalent race or ethnicity group by county as of the census 2020. These are the observations. The white alone non-Hispanic population was the most prevalent racial or ethnic group in most U.S. counties. However, other groups were dominant in specific regions, for example, Black or African American alone. Non-Hispanic are more prevalent in parts of the South. Hispanic or Latino are more prevalent in the Southwest and West. American Indian and Alaska Native alone, non-Hispanic, are more prevalent in areas with tribal lands in Alaska, the Southwest, and Midwest. In states with majority white population, the top five states with the fewest white alone, not Hispanic or Latino population are Texas 39.7%, Nevada 45.9%, Florida 51.5%, Georgia 50.1%, and New Jersey 51.9%. The top five states with the largest white alone not Hispanic or Latino population are Maine, 90.2%, West Virginia and Vermont, 89.1%, New Hampshire, 87.2%, Montana, 83.1%, and Iowa, 82.7%. Black or African American alone, not Hispanic or Latino, is the largest group in the District of Columbia with 40.9%. The other top five states with the second largest Black or African American alone, not Hispanic, not Latino racial or ethnic group, are Mississippi 36.4%, Louisiana 31.2%, Georgia 30.6%, Maryland 29.1%, and Alabama 25.6%. Let us shift our focus to the foreign-born population. This category, as defined by the U.S. Census Bureau, are people who were not U.S. citizens at birth, including naturalized U.S. citizens, lawful permanent residents, immigrants, temporary migrants, such as foreign students, humanitarian migrants, such as refugees and asylees, and unauthorized migrants. According to American Community Survey briefs, the foreign-born population has grown over the last five decades. In 1970, it was 9.6 million, 4.7% of the total U.S. population. By 2022, it was estimated to be 46.2 million. 13.9% of the population. The top 10 states with the most foreign-born are on your screen. At the top of the list is California with 26.7%, followed by New Jersey with 23.5%. The remaining states are on your screen. In the middle column is the population estimate, with numbers in thousands. The data for all the other states can be found online 
at census.gov. This is a graphical image of the foreign-born population data as a percentage of the total state population in a map of the U.S. It is color-coded with the key to the data at the right lower part of the map. The darker the color, the larger the foreign-born population. The data are from 2022 and can be accessed online in the link at the bottom of the image. On your screen is the foreign-born population by region of birth. The regions are Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, Oceania, and Latin America, and Caribbean. The subcategories under the Latin America and Caribbean region are Mexico, other Central America, South America, and Caribbean. The Latin America and Caribbean category has the most foreign-born by region of birth in the U.S. with 50.3%. Under this region is Mexico with the highest at 23.1% and Caribbean at 10%. Asia has the second largest region of birth with 31.1%. Africa has 6%. The data from the other regions are on your screen. The population estimate is in the middle column and is in thousands. This slide shows the foreign-born by entry period, meaning in what year period did they come into the U.S. Nearly one-third arrived in the U.S. since 2010, with 48.2% of African-born immigrants being the most recent. In contrast, most Northern American and European-born immigrants arrived before 1990, over 70% of Latin American-born individuals arrived before 2010, while South American and Caribbean-born populations saw more recent entries. Over half of the foreign-born population is now naturalized, with the highest rates among European and Asian-born individuals. This slide shows the percentage of the foreign-born that naturalized in 2022 and 2010 for comparison. For charity, and for the benefit of our global viewers outside the United States, naturalization means these individuals became U.S. citizens. Overall, naturalization rates increased across all the foreign-born regions. The largest increase was among African-born individuals, from 46.1% in 2010 to 61% in 2022. This was followed by Latin America, from 32.1% to 43.4%. The region of Oceania saw the smallest change, gaining 3.6% from 2010 to 2022. Within Latin America, Mexican-born individuals had the most significant growth, from 22.9% in 2010 to 35.2% in 2022. The rates for those from other Central America also increased from 29.6% to 34.2%. This slide highlights educational attainment among the population 25 years and older in 2022 and 2010. From 2010 to 2022, high school completion rose from 68.3% being the sum of 22.5 plus 18.8 plus 27 to 75.1%, while for the native-born it increased from 89% to 92.8%. Bachelor's degree attainment grew by over 7 percentage points for both groups. However, significant regional gaps persist, with Latin American-born individuals having the lowest high school completion rates and Northern American-born individuals the highest at 94.2% in 2022. Asia led in bachelor's degrees at 55.4%, with the largest growth seen in European and Northern American-born groups. This slide shows labor force participation rates among the population 16 years or older in 2022, foreign-born individuals had a higher rate, 66.9%, than natives, 62.9%.
with foreign-born males leading at 76.8%. Native-born females slightly outpaced foreign-born females, 59% versus 57.4%. African-born individuals had the highest overall rate, 76.1% with strong participation also from Latin American and Oceanian groups. Among foreign-born males, most regions had over 70% participation, while African-born females led among women at 69.4%. Now, let us debunk some rumors that you may hear about the U.S. Census. Can my answers be shared with law enforcement or used against me? No. The law prevents the Census Bureau from sharing your information with law enforcement or immigration enforcement. Your answers do not affect your eligibility for government benefits, and they cannot be used against you by any government agency or court in any way. Your answers are used only to create statistics about our country. The Census Bureau is bound by Title 13 of the U.S. Code to protect your personal information, every answer to every question, and keep it strictly confidential. What about the rumor that your answers on the U.S. Census can be shared with the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, or local health officials? No. The law prevents the Census Bureau from sharing your information with any local, state, or federal health officials. Your answers cannot be used against you by any government agency in any way. Your answers are used only to create statistics about our country. The Census Bureau is bound by Title 13 of the U.S. Code to protect your personal information, every answer to every question, and keep it strictly confidential. For additional answers to questions you may have, please go online to census.gov. The learning objectives of this video documentary have been met. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support helps us bring more insightful, informative, and educational content to a wider audience. This has been a presentation of Aero Channel in collaboration with Opo Mulero Media LLC.